Roberto, um, when Luke and I started to, to reflect on your work that we, 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 we strongly admire and respect, and um, we were struck by uh, your relationship with your subject in the sense that it was clear from what we saw in a way, you know, your work also triggered, like you know, a wider conversation at, at, at this festival. Possibly, we were struck by your uh, idea of caring for your subjects, and and even though the other side, um, it's an intimate film on certain people, uh, we we feel part of of these stories, but we never feel that we are spying on them. At this because. It's clear that you know you are not spying on them. You are with them, feeling their pain, their uh, their dynamics, and and you are sharing and you are creating a dialogue. You and and, and the team with you. So we would like to 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 hear from you how you achieved this sense of intimate collaboration. That uh, it's quite unique, I think, as a, a filmmaking pra filmmaking practice out there at the moment. Good evening, and thanks for coming to the screening and staying for the Q&A, first of all. Um, well, I think there are two, so two aspects, perhaps, of this, uh, the answers. One is uh, being intimate, creating intimacy, and the other one is caring. Uh, uh, so it all starts from, so again, I, I never work with, uh, with uh, uh, people that I don't know, completely know. I never, uh, a, a, you know, uh, uh, try to establish, uh, to, I never use the film process to establish intimacy. Uh, all my films, I've known people before, long time before, and even in this case, some of the people, including uh, Li Lisa, actually, and some of the m people from the militia, they are family members of the people that work with me in, the, in, in uh, two of my past three films. So there is already a I say a trust that is established, already a trust that I inherited because I'm part of a family. Um, and then there is uh, the, the, the fact that in this case, this is my first film that I shot outside of Texas. Uh, this is me being present in the, ter in, in the territory. In this case, I relocated there with my, with my own family. Um, and, and so intimacy, though that was trust, intimacy, um, I talked about it today. Some people I see that were in the, in the master class today. Uh, I think it's, uh, it's something that has to do with me more as a human being, more than a filmmaker, uh, with the fact that I, I long for uh, intimate, one on one intimate relationships. So, this is uh, almost a, 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 the only way I know how to live, really. Uh, it's just I, I, um, I, I need one on one. Um, uh, uh, deep exchange and openness and and and, and transparency and, and honesty to to feel th that I matter and in a way all I can offer an exchange to make people feel that they matter just because of the fact that we can he listen to each other hear each other and be there for each other um, so this is what really you know I the people that are in the film are those people with which with whom I actually w was able to feel this intimacy uh, these are just a few of the myriad of stories that are filmed. These are 90 minutes of 100 out of 150 hours of, of you know, of of of, of shoot of footage that I collected. Um, so that's really intimacy has something to do more with me as a person, that, and then it translates into something, you know, into, into the film. Caring, caring is an ongoing process, and there can be intimacy. Um, uh, where even if intimacy continues, uh, you throughout the process of being intimate, being open, uh, sometimes there's distance implied. There's you know the, the most the, the, there's a lot of emotional rebound from uh, intimacy, the difficulty. Sometimes we care for each other. Sometimes we <coughs> we despise each other. We abandon each other. Some uh, even Mark the, just abandoned the project several times, and I abandoned the project several times. Um, so uh, caring is ongoing, and and it's something that completely transcends the life of the film. It's something that keeps going on today. So this is really it's something that has to do with me as a human being and as a filmmaker at the same time. All this intimacy that I'm able uh, to to build. And this um. In the film, I, I get the sense of you know you 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 are very much collaborating with your subjects, and 
I mean, there's been a, a really broad spectrum of, of interpretations of, you know, scripted reality, structured reality. Um, audiences here will know the, the perhaps the worst end of it in things like Made in Chelsea um, on television um, to way more artful things like, like your films. I wondered as, you know, as a filmmaker, as a creative, what, what kind of works, what filmmakers are really um, influencing you and how, how you got to this point? Um. I don't know, Made in Chelsea, I assume is it, if it's worth, some people laugh, maybe it's not worth watching, but <laughs> I don't know, but I, so I don't, um, influence, I don't, I'm not sure, I can say the people I with that made a, you know, they admired, that changed me com completely, and, uh, uh, you know, I like, and, and actually looking at, well, I can mention some, like the Marginal Cinema of Brazil, all these people that make films for nothing, there are several names, like Oswaldo Candeias, Riguera, Rogerio Gonzerla, and all these people. The Pink Cinema, that was borderline erotic cinema of Japan of the 60s, because again, of the subversive uh, um, element of it, these people that risk jail uh, and their own life for, to make films and... Uh, and there's a bunch of others in some Philippine, the Philippines, the film, film, cinema of the Philippines of the past, where I actually uh, willingly, you know, relocated for two years to teach film because I really wanted to dig deep into the film culture in the Philippines. So, but all of them have some sort of uh, common element, which is the subversive element, you know, the, the aspect of filmmaking, risking everything, almost film as a matter of life and death, which which is something beautiful. So all these people when it get swam against the wave and became the voice of, uh, you know, the underdogs and all that, which is something that I, I really admire. Robert, uh, briefly, in our introduction before we were touching on, on the fact that in all your works, or at least in these, like in these work and your previous works as well, you focus on um, a less seen, less heard part of American society. Um, so I was wondering, who or what is the other side for you? Uh, and why you know, do you decide to place your cinematic eye on, you know, on, these, on these dynamics, people, communities that are not there, usually depicted, portrayed, and yeah. So um, obviously I call the film The Other Side and it is, there's a relationship there's a between the title and the people, but uh, what I was interested in is the fact that the other side in America, the way I learned, you know, uh, you know, that it, it can be, it can be the way I understand it. It's it can be used. It 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 is it, a very, uh, it's a way of almost that implies an exclusion yeah. of the other side. There is certain violence, inherent violence, in 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 calling a group, social, racial group, the other side, and uh, and uh, and it's uh, something that I. I just learned to, you know, I, I learned in America, living in America for 15 years, and it's something that does not belong to me, this, you know, this uh, uh, abrupt way of excluding other people. So that was a people context of, uh, um, so that's why I was interested in calling the film The Other Side. It's uh, actually, it's a, it's a question mark, like who's the other side? Again, there's a lot of bana banal things that I could say, like, but try not to be that banal. I, I mean, the point is, um, it more, maybe even concerns me as as a filmmaker. Maybe this is too intellectual now. <laughs> it's better to be banal, but but it concerns also me as a, you know being the other side because I don't really know because I come from a blue collar environment. I know what it means to struggle. I know what it means to be a you know an addict and all that. And I'm uh, very comfort. You know, filmmakers now. You know, people pay to listen to me in London, and and it's. Uh, and uh, so I've become the, the other side <laughs> of that guy yeah, that grew up in, it's and true. it's, uh, and it's, yeah, and it's, uh, and it's uncomfortable. So it depends on how I see even myself, yeah. and I was, it's, it's hard because sometimes I do, the part of me feels way more comfortable with some of these people and feels, completely get the anger, the political anger, wanting to react against the establishment, I totally get that. So, but at the same time, I am at the other side of it, and mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah, so it's it's uh, something that is very this concept of being the other side, and it just works two way in a, it's such a multi-directional way, uh, you know, concept that no matter how you see it, it implies exclusion, and it's yeah. really aggressive. screwed up. Yeah, aggressive. Um, I was quite interested in you know f further pushing that that idea of you being in the film and and your relationship to the the subjects. Um, 
were there limits? Did you obviously there are quite difficult images on the screen, um, and I understand that you work with a, a DOP, and you, you know sometimes you're shooting, sometimes he's shooting. Um, w was there anything that you found that was quite complicated to include in the story that you you didn't feel you could give a platform to essentially? So yeah, I think maybe we had to say a little bit about uh, how it work because nothing is scripted, and I've I've, I've only scripted a film once, and that was my first film. So there's nothing uh, preconceived uh, uh, after you know what, I, uh, uh, and there's no story really to begin with. The story is uh, is a, is a uh, it's a how do you say it, it comes? It's a common no. I would say it's a group effort with you know the, with among you know that comes with me and them their participation. So what we do is we we uh, I film something usually I start with observation because I need that material that comes from. Ob pure observation to then process it, analyze it, and then bring it back to them, bring, you know, back to them and talk about what I noticed. And, and we talk about uh, how, th where, do we, where do we get from there, from what we are doing, what do we want to say, how, you know, how do we say it, do I keep observing, or there, do we need to do reenactments? And this is something that we need to decide together. And, uh, and all the, t the, the, the Things that are off limit are discussed there, and uh, and uh, interestingly for me, and and actually, but not surprisingly, usually things that are off limits concern the emotional uh, realm, their emotional realm, uh, things that. Uh, where their fr emotional fragility is exposed, uh, especially for the male category, you know, fr being fragile, being vulnerable as a man, crying for a man is always a reason for which the shoot is over. And that's exactly what happened with this film. When Mark broke down, the shoot was over. Uh, whereas the physical exposure, exposing themselves physically, what well, I could perceive as vulnerability, is actually something that is extremely empowering for them, extremely daring, empowering, something that. Uh, uh, yeah, that shows pr it's flexing muscles. So uh, again, to go back to your question, it's uh, the limitations, the uh, the things that are off limits are discussed there. That we don't need to, um, uh, I'd say, push those buttons. We know from the beginning where we cannot go because it's just too hard for them or for me to explore. There can be other examples that I can give, but. Uh, you, uh, I mean, just to go a little further, you as a as a man also in that environment amongst men who are, I, from what I see, quite different. You you know, perhaps culturally um, uh, and politically, uh, do you, do you feel that that causes a a lot of friction in in access to to the subjects and them opening up, or you being the outsider or, or quite different to to I guess local men? Um, you have a, a they open up to you essentially. Because, you know, so all my life I struggle, part of me struggle with the fact that I've been considered different from the people that I grew up with. I was too sensitive, too intellectual, not worth fighting with, and, it, and I struggle with that. I really, there's part of me that really wanted to be like a guy that could beat the crap out of you with an impulsive reaction, and I'm strong and I'm intimidating, and I never managed to do it, and I never managed to be one of these people, I worked really hard at it. So I have the two phases. I, I put myself in a situation where I could be this, the macho man, and I put myself in a situation where I completely rejected that. So uh, here we are, you know, again, really, like, you, I am clearly different, and it's just, you know, but, uh, and I, and, uh, but what they know, what I share, they, they know me, make, you know, in, in other aspects too, so they know that I'm, I'm different and sometimes not quite. And uh, and and then we relate in a way. Um, we relate with the with the drug addicts. I relate with the people who think that at some point the only solution f uh, for um, political social injustice is to kill people. Uh, that is something that belonged to us Italians in the 70s, especially. Think we need an armed revolution to take care of things. I strongly believe in that. Sometime in my life, so. Um, uh, yeah, so there is something where we connect despite our differences. So despite the fact that, yes, of course, I, uh, 
uh, it's funny, they came to Cannes and I'm wearing this glasses and they know I can't help it. There's also this, you know, I like those glasses. I don't like, you know, what can I do? <laughs> but, at the, but at the same time, there's something about, you know, uh, also the, the, the boxing deal and the, I'm still, you know, all this part that, you know, the macho stuff that, yeah, part of me likes the macho stuff, part of me regrets it. And, and, and it's, uh, yeah, so there's definitely common traits that associate us. Roberto, if I might dwell for a second on, on, on your team, the people that you worked on in order to, to create this film, um, your collaboration with the DOP, Director of Photography, Diego Romero, is, is clearly very important here. You were touching before on that, if you can expand. And also your relationship with the filmmaker, uh, with Marielle Doso. And she worked for, for many of the Darden Brothers films. She's the filmmaker on many of the Darden Brothers films. So if you can tell us a, a bit about this dynamic, you know, how it works technically. Um, yeah, so Diego uh, was my ex-colleague in the Philippines where I was teaching film uh, for two years. And Marie Hélène uh, edited all the Dardenne films, all of them, and all of my films. Uh, but I met her by, by chance, actually. It's, an, it's a long story, but really, uh, she ended up seeing my footage. And she ended up not only editing my films, offering her services to the point that Marie Hélène and her husband, Joao, are the producers That's of my great. film. Uh, because they all, you know, there's no money involved, but there's services involved, and uh, they're f they're, they're key there. The you know, sorry, the just for a second, if I can, we can say to the first three films were all self-funded, right? You basically uh, put yes. your own money yes, in yes, it, yes, yes, yes. And, and this one is being, yeah. the last one. This one, uh, yeah, this is the only one who's funded with a with a serious, you know, I mean, budget they made a, you know, institutions made a, made in Italy, in France, yeah. Italy and France, yeah, Italy and France. Um, them, okay, Diego and, well, yeah, they're, they're key. Uh, uh, Diego is, you know, Diego is being, is my friend and collaborator, and it, it, I value their input. Sometimes Diego takes over the, the shoot. Um, several times I make sure I don't go to the shoot because I'm f emotionally unfit to really be in control of the situation where my emotionally overloaded and I am I, I'm, I become and it happens all the time I become an obstacle to really that I, to to really the well-being of everybody and I and I'm not there for at least a couple of days a week it usually happens and Diego is the one who, who takes over especially because we're very different I am overly sensitive and overly uh, fearful and concerned, which is a great thing uh, for several things. I think I'm not I'm not trying I'm not overcompensating it. This is who I am, and I'm, and it permit, allows me to connect with them a lot. And Diego is <laughs> Diego's, Diego's not <laughs> just <laughs> leave it at that. So there, Diego's not. We so this thing, Diego's this little thing, which just couldn't care less. It's like, you look, you, you don't die now. Die in five minutes, and I have to film you. I mean, just, you know, it's just that's just he would be here. Be so they, we had this then for which he takes over our time. And I tell him we know each other. Sometimes I said, Diego, you better go home. There, give me the camera, because you would not. And yeah, you know, and, and and vice versa. Uh, Maria Len, uh, on the other end, she's the one. Just what I do is I. I kind of take a look at my footage and I don't tell her what I like. And I let her do a first editing for a month. It depends. Now that we had some more money, she did a couple months by herself. Okay. And then we start from there. My idea of the film, her idea of the film, and we see if we can converge. And we usually do because we trust each other. Mm -hmm. And so really these two people are just as much as directors as I am. It's just that Pretty I, much a perhaps the difference process. is that I... I start from the beginning and, uh, until the end, and they just come in at some, point, some point. But that this is how I like to work with my collaborators. We only, it's only six of it's only six of so us. So. Thank you so much. So, your time now. If you can just wait for the mic. Any question? This one here. Hi, congratulations for the movie. I have a question. Do you ever pay your uh, characters? And if you do, do you think money is the real motivation for them to play in front of the camera rather than, than the trust in you to share their uh, stories or intimacy? Yeah, thanks for the question because it's, uh, you, you said something very important there, like uh, is the money motivation. Uh, in all my films, uh, the, the, I've, I've been very mindful of 
think it ought to compensate because I think there has to be some sort of compensation for the time. But first, not enough so that there becomes a motivation. Second, the timing of it has to be uh, planned so that it doesn't really become a work, something you work into to, to a paycheck. Uh, so um, sometimes, most of the times, the compensation has been way, you know, uh, it's kind of an ongoing thing, like way, you know, unexpectedly way after the project is completed, there's a situation where the financial intervention is needed, uh, be it uh, fixing a car on paying a rent f for a month, but unexpectedly so, uh, and uh, and uh, uh, distantly from the film, from the shoot. So that I think that personally, I think that that works to. Um, fairly compensate people, but in a way that it doesn't interfere with the, with the process, with the film process, with the motivation of making a film. Um, in the case, this is still new, but in the case of the previous film, shot in 2012, compensation happened in 2015, where there's been a problem with their goat farming license, and we, I, I, we because now I have uh, you know, other people that bought the film, we stepped in and helped. So um, it, it's something that happens, but it's not defined so that, uh, yeah, we can carry on with the work in a, in a, in a transparent way. Yes, there are questions here. Thanks. Thank you very much. Um, you spoke about um, where your ideas or um, certain aspects of your personality converge with your subjects, but could you talk to us about differences? Because I think that your film does this very well, but it speaks to a global context. So it's sort of, for us to see that side of America is really educational. Um, but I'm sure there are moments where there are, there are things that come up, for instance, the idea of bearing arms in the Second Amendment, and we saw that quite prominently in the second half of the movie. So could you talk about yeah, differences. Well, I mean, my different. Yeah, well, there's a strong ideological difference. There's, uh, there's strong. Um, yeah, there's a lot of. Uh, yes, I could, I could enumerate all of them, but the point is, uh, what am I trying to do here? Am I trying? I'm very wary of making my own manifesto. So I could tell you my differences, so that you know, I, I might feel better or might. Be, you know, but the point is, this is not my manifesto, and this is part of my the ethics of being a somewhat of a you know, s filmmaker of the real, be it a documentarian or, or a hybrid, uh, because uh, for me, I make it a strong point of, uh, let's say, acting as if this was a j the justice system, a democratic justice system where perpetrators and victims, supposed perpetrators, supposed, you know, uh, perpetrators and victims have the right to to defend themselves and speak up, and I am just uh, facilitating them, collecting the stories and exposing it. So my differences, yeah, well, they're there, but this is not about about my differences. It's not, you know, the, the problem between uh, what's happening here, the film and the audiences is actually me, because I'm the great manipulator who could actually twist it all, yeah, I can do whatever I want, you know, with, with this dynamic, and it's, um, for me, the most important po thing is to have them speak up, despite my differences. Now, if you want to know what hap what's happening, what's going on when I had to face situation that I despise, well, that's a different thing. What's going on? Well, a lot is going on. Uh, emotionally, psychologically, it's traumatic. It gets traumatic. It gets unbearable. And, and, uh, and, and I need a lot of support. Uh, that transcends the film. So one thing is what I do with the film, and then what am I going to do with all the trauma, the anger, uh, uh, the despair? Well, I need I need a support system, uh, uh, from psychotherapy to friendships, uh, uh, from you know hitting a pillow with a racket to you know crying, all that. So the catharsis that happens is a complicated thing. It's sometimes a year long, uh, not year, a multi-year long process, and and for which, honestly speaking, after this film, I thought that this it was I was done with filmmaking, because it's uh, sometimes it gets really unbearable. In a situation like this, in a question like this, uh, during the premiere in in Cannes 2015, I broke down uh, uh, emotionally. I had a complete breakdown because it's one of the most difficult questions to answer. Uh, and now I can kind of deal with it. But no, it's really hard because yeah. the thing is, I you know, yeah, what do I do with this? 
you know, they, excuse me, I'm talking a little too long, but you know, huh. if I made my own manifesto, it would be empowering for me and I couldn't sleep at night. So the thing is I need to stay away from mm. this and, and it, it's hard. It goes against my nature sometimes. Before thanking Roberto for his time and for his beautiful work. Thank you. Uh, thank you.